Tennessee Hawks are going to win this game. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Did Russ sleep last night? Seriously, like, if you're into visualization at all, that had to be the way that played out. You're Russell Wilson, okay? You've been through everything you've been through in Seattle. You come to the sort of mutual decision, we're going to part ways. Begged out, basically. Right. You get traded to Denver for a haul. You get a new contract. You get a new home. And your very first game is to go back to Seattle. And two things, actually three things happened. A, you got booed. Loudly. Consistently. B, but that's to be expected. He B, begged out. I know, right. And I, he, well, was a, he, became is a, it? he became a diva at the end. And he kind of... He, he, you know, he made himself very unlikable. Or was he a diva all along? Well, I, I mean, mean pu- publicly he kind of put that forward, I think, at the end. Yeah. So, so you, okay. But he did win a title there. You, you, and he, come right. on, he's their greatest quarterback. Right. He went to two. He won one. Um, okay, but you get booed. Then your new coach... <laughs> takes pull, the ball out of your hands. Pulls you off the field for a 64-yard field goal. And then part three, you lose. You lost that game. Like, that is a nightmare beginning to this rain. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh and, and not gosh. only that, you gagged twice. I mean, not you personally, but your offense gagged twice on the one. <laughs> My God. You know, Russ, Russ called Marshawn Lynch last night. That's why you don't run the ball yeah. on the one-yard line. <laughs> That's why we threw. Oh, my gosh. What a total mess. Um, hey, this is off the subject, but I wanted to pass it along. We was remembering the changeover. And Larry's in for dibs, everybody. Welcome uh, in this morning. YouTube, Twitch, hello. Glad you're with us. Phone line's coming up here in just a second at 888-957-9570. George Contos in 25 minutes. So in the changeover, Bonte passed along the breaking news about Robert Sarver. Right. The owner of the Suns has been suspended for one year. Uh, this is the Suns and the Mercury, Phoenix Mercury organization, uh, fined ten million dollars and must complete training program, program a training program focused on respect and appropriate workplace conduct, which tells you everything you need to know about why he's being suspended. But here are further findings by the NBA, if you'd like a little detail as to what it was they found with. Robert Sarver, the owner of the Suns. Who cannot be present, by the way, at any NBA or WNBA team facility, any office, any arena, any practice facility. He can't attend or participate in any event, WNBA, NBA uh, activity related in any way. Games, practices, business partner activities, nothing. Nothing. No, he cannot be involved in transactions. He cannot be involved in... NBA ops. I don't know how you keep someone out of that. Like as what, the owner. Yeah, like I mean, the owner's like, you better come over to my house and ask me. I, don't send text messages because you know there, then there's receipts. But um, I don't know if he actually goes out of this. Will but, he be forced to divest himself of the franchise? Well, to and me, this is that's a precedent setting thing. This is why I'd like to dive onto this just for a couple of minutes because I don't understand this in the NBA, and we've already been there with Donald Sterling. Here's what the NBA found: Sarver at least five times, used the N-word, okay? Made sex-related, inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of females, inappropriate physical conduct toward men, and engaged in harsh treatment. Look, I don't understand the N-word ever. Period. End of sentence. But in the NBA, are you kidding me? How are you like? How does he? How would he even think that's a that's ever gonna fly? It's a wrap. Yeah, you can't bring to the NBA. The thing is run by LeBron and Curry, and you're running around with the N word. You're out. Yeah, get out of here. This he got off soft. I'm surprised that 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 they didn't know what they were getting into when he purchased the franchise. Jeez. You tell me there was no indications of this prior to him buying the Suns. I mean, I, I, do I don't, they not do their due diligence? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how do that comes their, in. Do they care about anything but the price? I don't know how that comes in when you're on your way in, but once you're here, aren't you vetted? Aren't the Joe Lacobs I mean, of the world when they're when they go to say, "I want to bid on the Warriors" or Larry Ellison, whoever? Aren't they all vetted by some group of NBA I owners think, or I think representatives? So. Of the I owners? think so. But then again, not. well, but if you're vetted by other owners, then you're. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're being vetted by other white billionaires. Right. Right? Like, but once you're here, and obviously the world has changed so much, how long ago was it that Sarver got this team? It's a good question. I mean, if he's up. had it forever, then that tells you something. I don't even know how long he's had the team. But this, uh, it, it, <laughs> what are you telling me in a year he's going to come back and you're going to have trained this out of him? I I don't see it. I don't see how they, like, how are you allowed to stay? I, but, I mean, they forced Sterling to, to sell the franchise. 04, Spadoni says. So he's had the team now for 04. 18 years. Wow. And, yeah, the world has changed a lot in 18 years when it comes to workplace conduct. But not the N-word. <laughs> what are we talking about here? I, that's wild. That's wild. He got off easy. Ten million dollar fine too. That's that, that that's like me handing you a five dollar bill and saying, "Go get me a Starbucks if you can." You're right. I mean, like, what are we talking about here? Robert Sarver, ten million dollars. The Phoenix Suns are worth four billion. Uh, you know, like, ugh, that's just that's weird to me. That's that's really weird to me. Well, I mean, um, it will it'll be interesting to me to see how long he is allowed to keep owning this franchise, or will they try to? True. I mean, because I mean, the franchise is is uh, you know these things escalate in value at such a rate that it's an incredible asset to own. That's, There's that's, lots of yeah. people that would love to own own any one of these franchises. Any franchise in the NBA goes up for sale, and there's going to be multiple bidders because it's a you know the arrows pointing up on the revenue, and everybody knows it. So <laughs> it's a it's a it's a very safe investment overall, no doubt. And I mean, I just wonder also. I look, I know we all have our feelings about Chris Paul, but just take him as an example. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, how do you feel? What's going on inside when you're at a podium talking about basketball and you're surrounded by Suns logos? all of the corporate sponsors that are involved with that, and and the guy that's raking in the cash because of it is running around using the N-word. How would that make you feel? That's demoralizing. Well, it would make you feel like you want to go on strike. Like, you're like, hey, I'm not playing one more minute for this guy. Um, but ultimately, maybe they, they compartmentalize and say, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing for him. I'm playing for my family. I'm playing for my respect. I'm playing for my money. I'm playing for... All the things that I care about, not the owner. Yeah, I mean, that's it would be the, hard the, to separate. That's what the Clippers did for years. It's crazy that Chris Paul's been a part of both of these now, by the way. Chris Paul was on the Clippers when this happened to Donald Sterling, and now here he is on the Suns with, with Robert Sarver. So he knows this very, very well, and you're right. I mean, what do you do? And you're being paid 40 or $50 million to go out there yourself. So these guys have become very, very rich men, and, and, and maybe they're, you know, going to say, hey, let me take some of that money and do some good with it. Maybe that's the way they sort of rationalize it, but I really feel for them, uh, you know, despite their salaries, uh, to have to, to, to work for somebody like that. It's, that's brutal. It's, that's brutal. I'm surprised it took as long as it did. I mean, the, the original allegations came out in a story on ESPN last November. Took them that long oh. to do this investigation, and they've known for how many years before that. Yeah. Believe me, yeah. believe me, the Suns organization has been known. Uh